The bankrupt child that created Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce makes some of the most expensive cars in the world. And yet this $7 billion company was founded by a boy who grew up in poverty with almost no education. In fact, Henry Royce started his first million dollar company with just 20 pounds to his name. So, how did he do it? His father went on to work for another flour mill, but he was still in a massive amount of debt. When he was only nine years old, Henry's father passed away. Not only was this devastating, but it meant the family's financial struggles only got worse. And so, instead of going to school, Henry worked full time. He sold newspapers and delivered telegrams for the post office, making the equivalent of just a few cents for every delivery. However Henry's mother was still in debt, and realized she could no longer support her children. So she sent Henry to live with an elderly couple instead. So his aunt tried to help with his education, by giving him the small fee needed to join an apprenticeship program with the Great Northern Railway Company. This meant Henry had to relocate again, but luckily Henry managed to move in with a man named George Arrow, whose son was also an apprentice for the railway company. At night, George tutored the two boys on how to use tools. Henry may not have had much of an education, but he was skilled with his hands, and had an incredible work ethic. At 17 years old, Henry began working with a tool making company in Leeds, making just one penny per hour. After working these different jobs and saving up whatever he could, he was finally able to afford to take electrical engineering classes at night, at the City and Guilds Institute. The skills he learned from these classes meant that by 19 years old, he was able to get the best job of his life so far, working as chief electrician for the Maxim Western Electric Company. Henry felt like he was finally making progress. However in 1884, the company tanked, and Henry was left unemployed yet again. But this time, instead of looking for another new job at a different company, Henry decided he was going to start his own company. Even though he came from such humble beginnings, Henry felt there had to be more to life than this, and so he decided he'd try to become rich and start his own business. Of course, he knew he needed some help, so he tried to convince his co-workers to join him. His friend named Ernest Claremont agreed to take the risk and together they began a new business called F. H. Royce and Company in 1884. At the time, Henry only had twenty pounds to his name, while Ernest had fifty pounds. But they pooled what little savings they had and went into business together, beginning by making electric fittings. Finally, after lots of testing, they created their first successful product the electric doorbell. These began to sell very quickly, and Henry was known to stay up working long nights at his desk to make more of them for his customers. Using the money they made, Henry was able to begin creating more ambitious bigger products, like generators and eventually even an electric crane. In 1897, the orders in hand amounted to £6,000. By 1899, the company's share capital was £30,000. Now that may not sound like a lot, but remember this is the 1800s, after modern day inflation, that equates to over a million dollars. However, despite this success, Henry was already setting his sights on something even more ambitious, to create the most luxurious car in the world. Now at the time, very few people owned cars. But Henry Royce was one of the first to get a keen interest in automobiles, and purchased a used 1901 two-cylinder French car. Unfortunately it was in such terrible condition, it wouldn't even start. But by the next day, Henry had it working again. And instead of stopping there, he continually made improvements to all the faults he found with it. When Charles Rolls met Henry Royce, Surely neither of them could have possibly imagined the journey they were about to embark on together. Both of them shared a true passion for cars. And this partnership would lead to the iconic Rolls-Royce brand. After trying out Henry's car, Charles was so impressed by the quality of the Royce 10, he said it was clear that they needed to work together. 
there was a significant age gap between them. Charles was just 27 years old, and Henry was 41. Henry had many years of experience building electronics and mechanical objects to perfection, and Charles was more than just a lover of fast cars. He was an incredible businessman who knew how to harness the power of marketing and public relations. Charles used his connections in the upper class to his advantage. He exploited his ties in the world of politics, media, and even royalty to find customers who could afford to buy their luxury cars. Even though Henry had refused to make aeroplane engines for years, he was forced to make them at the beginning of World War I. In 1914, they manufactured the Rolls-Royce Eagle engine, which provided half of the total horsepower for all of the Allied planes. This was the beginning of Rolls-Royce's legacy when it came to plane engines. And with their cars, by 1921, there was such a huge demand for them that there was a three-year backlog. So they opened a new American Rolls-Royce factory in Springfield, Massachusetts. Within ten years, they had produced 2,944 cars. In 1930, Henry Royce was awarded the Order of the British Empire, and was knighted as a baronet. Just three years later, he passed away at the age of 70.